rock stars, roadies, or groupies who are harmed in the making of this broadcast. Giving it to you straight and no chaser. This is On the Rocks with Jamie Wilson. Hey, 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 guys, welcome to On the Rocks. I'm Jamie Wilson, and man, welcome to Vinyl Night. We have been um, trying to put this show together since last year. We're on our 27th episode, and I'm so glad it's finally happening. We wanted to change the format up a little bit because, you know, we, we've been in interviewing bands and artists, but we wanted to talk to uh, music lovers and collectors of what is um, now the most available and the best-selling physical format of music today, and that is, of course, vinyl. And we've got a group, great group of people tonight to uh, share their expertise, their skills, their passion. Um, but before that, hey, let's say thank you to our sponsors so much. Thank you so much to the Misty Mountain Cafe uh, for your premium blend coffees. Thank you so much. Uh, Buenos Dias Panaderia who always, always brings me so much happiness with their delivery of Milo buns. Guys, you know, you guys got to order. Uh, this is a perfect combination. It's just a perfect combination of premium blend coffee and Milo buns in your mouth. You will just die of happiness. And, of course, thank you so much to our friends from Liquor.ph. And they've got an announcement. It's an all-American liquor sale. At uh, Liquor.ph, try out the best names in American liquor this April from our friends at Liquor.ph. Get up to 30% off when you shop for iconic bourbons like this wonderful Wild Turkey 81 that I'm holding in my hands right now. Yeah, baby. I love, I love this whiskey. And, of course, uh, you got to have some more bottles also in bundles like Jack Daniels, Tito's Vodka, Evan Williams, and so many more. It's your last week to get these great deals only at Liquor.ph. Now, um, of course, you know, it's vinyl night, and tonight it's all about the vinyl. We've seen a resurgence of interest in vinyl in the past years, and aside from the many record stores popping up all over the place, it's also wonderful that labels, for example, like Offshore Music, have been releasing LPs of current bands. To date, they've released two Apartel albums, Interplay, a two-LP set, 45 RPM, made in Japan, and two pressings of Full Flood, one mastered by Levi Seitz at Black Belt Mastering USA, and one half-speed release mastered at Abbey Road Studios. Also, they've also released um, uh, the uh, Eli Buendia and, and uh, Itchy Worms collaboration, Pariwara Lutang. So that's a seven-inch double-A single on white vinyl made by in Japan. Offshore also made a big splash in the collector's world with the release of the Eraserhead's 25th anniversary limited edition vinyl of ultra-electromagnetic pop, remastered and lacquer-cut by Bernie Gunda, Grundman himself and pressed in RTI USA. So, you know, seeing the resurgence of vinyls, we wanted to get together a group of vinyl heads who have been either collecting vinyl, selling and trading in vinyl, or just have an overwhelming passion for vinyl. And for tonight's show, we've got some awesome guys who will share their love, their knowledge, and their passion for the vinyl. So I'd like to bring on our first guest, ladies and gentlemen. He is a self-described observer of pop culture and an obscure vinyl junkie. He is also the main man and lead babysitter for his record label and its artists at Terno Recordings. He was also the prime mover for the Rave Scene Showrunner Consortium and Personally, I used to wither under his critical gaze, feeling that I'm being judged whenever I'd visit his record store, Groove Nation. And he now runs a record store called This Is Pop. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Toti Dalmosian. Hello. Hi, hey, Toti. How Jamie. you doing? All right. I'm going to bring on the other guys, all right? Just hang in there. For our next okay. guest, he's a broadcast journalist, <laughs> senior anchor and director for news content at CNN Philippines. Who is known for his late night newscast, The Final Word. Ladies and gentlemen, an avid vinyl collector. Please welcome Rico. He's on. Hey, Jimmy. How are you? Oh, he's showing off already. There you go, man. <laughs> How are you? Thank you so much, Jamie, for having me here on your hey. program. Wow. Hey, thank you. Uh, thank this you is so the first time I'm really, uh, I'm, I'm really coming out and telling everyone I'm, I've been a vinyl collector for like 30 years. <laughs> that's right. Well, 30 years. That's fantastic. All right. Yeah. Um, I'm going to bring on our two guests. Our next guest is a member of the Philippine House of Representatives from Mutinlupa's Lone District. He has been cited as an outstanding congressman and one of the most prolific legislators in our country. He is also an avid collector who is just saying he has 10 crates of vinyl right around him during this call. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Congressman Rufi Biazon. 
Hi, Jamie. Hi, everyone. And uh, thank you for having me here. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you for saying yes. Forward. You're busy, but thank you for uh, saying yes to share your passion for vinyl. And of course, our last guest, ladies and gentlemen, he's been part of the music scene for more than 20 years. He's associated in such bands as Eggboy, Cambio, Tarsus, The Jagos, and of course, Teddy Cab. He's a musician and a DJ who is also a crazy vinyl dude and totally fun to hang out with. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Diego Mapa. Hello, good evening. All right, Diego, hey, how are you doing, is. man? Hello. Hey, Diego. Thanks for having me. Guys, thank you so much for saying yes. Um, you know, vinyl is a passion that is growing and really growing. You, some of you have been collecting for years. I personally have just started collecting because it just brings me back to a better time. I love holding it in my hands. I love smelling it when I buy it. You know, it's it's such a it's such a wonderful experience. Not to mention, after you go to you you you're going home from the record store. That was my bit bit of vinyl, man. There, you, I just feel so cool doing that you know what i mean i just feel so cool but okay so let's start from the beginning guys how are you guys during this pandemic um how are you guys uh coping are you guys okay jago let's start with you sorry with me with me yeah uh okay no man uh, thank you for asking um, hanging in there <laughs> uh keeping sane uh busy and uh, uh stay, trying to stay healthy Trying to stay healthy, yeah. I think and, I'm staying too um, healthy. <laughs> doing uh, music projects, uh, selling records on the side. Nice. Yeah. Good, good, good. What about you, Congressman? I'm sure you've been busy. <laughs> yeah, I've been a, a bit busy. Uh, actually, going out most of the time. And it feels like going out on patrol during the Vietnam War. Because <laughs> when you're out on patrol, you don't That's how it is. Uh, uh, public office. And uh, actually, I had a COVID scare for the family uh, one, a, a couple of weeks ago. Um, we had tests for the, for the whole family. And our youngest son tested positive. Then I, I, I had not checked uh, immediately for another test the, the following day just to double check and he came out negative so in isip ko nun, so which one is the real thing <laughs> in positive by or negative <laughs> so I had to put him on isolation but um, eventually uh, he, he came out negative again after a week when we tested him again so it was a it was a false positive so it was wow. scary. <laughs> yeah, that's scary. That's no joke nowadays. You know, just just the stress every time because I work as a safety officer. So every time I go out for a shoot, and I get tested, I just it, the most stressful time is after the swab and waiting for your result. And you're just there like praying, praying yeah. and praying. But thankfully, you know, good thing. It's good to hear that uh, your your son is uh, healthy and uh, yeah, negative. He's good. He's good. That's yes. Great. Rico, how have you been, man? Well, you know, I've been back in the Philippines now for a year. Uh, I lived overseas for 25 years. Mm -hmm. I was in DC Business News uh, in Hong Kong and, and Singapore. And then after that, uh, BBC World News for 18 years uh, in Singapore and in London. So that's how uh, I started accumulating once again uh, my vinyl collection <laughs> and my travels overseas. But coming back to the Philippines on March 10, and then right after that, wow! I mean, it was the start of the lockdown. It was really crazy. And I joined CNN Philippines uh, in uh, mid-March in, in, in mid uh, March of last year. And uh, yeah, it's been a really challenging time uh, for many of our Kababayans, just like uh, uh, everyone here uh, in this uh, podcast, you know, reporting every day the number of rising infections, Moving from ECQ to uh, MECQ to GCQ and then back to ECQ, isn't it confusing? I mean, uh, all the different messaging and, and policies when it comes to uh, uh, this COVID-19 uh, response. So, I mean, there's always something to report on every day. And uh, that's what we do at CNN uh, Philippines. Well, thank mm. you so much for joining us. And I, I hope this uh, th tonight will earn you a respite from... Um, all the those numbers and those things That's to true. record That's because true. you get, you get a different topic. <laughs> yeah, you get to share your passion for vinyl. Yes. What about you, Tati? How have you been doing? How have you been keeping sane during this pandemic? Um, well, since uh, there aren't any gigs and or concerts, as you know, I also bring in uh, bands uh, from outside. Yeah. Um, 
I've been concentrating more on my record shop and really ramping things up, bringing a lot of stuff in. Nice. So that's more pretty much what, that, that's what makes me uh, sane. Tony, I'll be visiting you very soon huh, to take a look at your vinyl. Yes. <laughs> yes, please do. Please do. I, uh, nah. I, I think, nah, nah, I think you'd, be, uh, <laughs> you'd be happy. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the thing. See, if you go into Totti's shop, and I, and I went into, I would go into his old shop, um, you know, Group Nation, and I would always feel, and I had no idea what I was looking at. You know, I wasn't bit by the bug yet, but it was such a pleasure to, you know, just browse through the records. And you know, pull it out, see see the artwork, and you know, as I said, I love smelling the records. I don't know why. Maybe it's a fetish. I don't know if you guys do that. <laughs> but um, I want to I want to find out how did you guys get into vinyl? What was your first experience with vinyl that has led to this? Toti, can we start with you? Okay. Um, well, uh, back in the day, there was just really vinyl. It's not even vinyl. It's a record. It's called records. Yeah, the record, yeah. It's just it's just lately that it's been called vinyl for some reason. I don't know why. Maybe it's just passed on, whatever. But um, yeah, since it was just records back then, then uh, it was only natural that I'd be attracted to it given my background. And um, it started at an early age, like at like ten. Wow. So uh, when I discovered. Um, well, I got into a lot of things, but uh, the normal things that one gets into when you're in grade school. But but by 10, 11, I got into punk and new wave, and then it went on from there. So until until it grew to a collection of, we were actually like talking about the numbers that we have. What's your estimated number in your collection, Tati? Um, I don't know. What's 20, 20 years ago. So, <laughs> twenty years ago. So, how does that translate to? <laughs> how, how many? How many? No, like, I mean, how many records was, you actually? It was twenty k years ago. Wow. So, so the, oh my god. Maybe it's a little more. It's a little more. <laughs> a little more. <laughs> you, just, yeah. you just said you're bringing in more stuff, so I'm sure there's more now. <laughs> yes, because that's precisely why I got into the record store business. It's because it's for me to be able to get my stuff for myself wholesale. <laughs> and now I'm, and I'm, help I'm, I'm out looking. I'm other I'm, other collectors. Yeah, I, I'm looking at the faces of the other guys to go on. They're like, wow, man, what would I do? I don't have space for that. <laughs> that's the first space is a problem. <laughs> well, I don't have space. space. That's why That's why it's separate what a from, from me. <laughs> that's fantastic, man. What about you, Rico? What got you into records? Uh, 1982. I was uh, in uh, second year high school. I joined a mobile uh, music group. We used to play in parties. <laughs> Assumption, Moveda, Saint Scholastica, at Corinthian <laughs> Gardens, at Valle Verde Country Club, in Valle, Dasma, Forbes. You know, that's how I got into it. Uh, I, I was not the spinner, mm -hmm. but I started collecting 12-inch uh, remix or extended uh, versions <laughs> of new wave, of new wave. Uh, what do you call these artists uh, from Aztec Camera to Pale Fountains to In Excess, um, uh, Blow Monkeys, um, General Public. That's how it started. So what I did was uh, they said, oh, we need, we need someone to supply us with the record. So I had, friend, I had a friend whose dad was a captain of Philippine Airlines. So I would give him a list of things that I needed from the U.S. And he would bring it back and I would, you know, uh, pay him and collect it and I would give it to my uh, members of um, the mobile group. We were called DISC at that time. D-I-S-Q-U-E. So that's nah. how, how it started. <laughs> and from there, it just became a love affair uh, with records. That's true, Bobby. Records, yeah, records. Not, not vinyls. And since then, I've been collecting just 12 inch well most of my collection would be 12 inch remixes like uh, for example uh, this one of Aztec Camera Deep Wide and Tall or uh, General Public uh, Tenderness 
uh, dance mixes, you know, just 12 inches. I really get into um, into uh, into albums. But of course, the albums, I wouldn't buy them imported. I would buy them at SM, at Schumart, Harrison Plaza, because it was very close to, to my school uh, and in, high, in, uh, in college. Or I would go to Green Hills, Odyssey Records. I would buy the local ones for 30 pesos until, you know, inflation, you know, rising prices. You know, I got it all the way to 50 pesos, 60, 70 pesos. There you go. And then when I moved overseas, I sort of like stopped my collection. But because when I moved to BBC News, I would often go to uh, to London and uh, I would buy records um, in record shops and even in weekend markets. I'm not yeah. very particular about the cover, but what's important to me is just the, the record itself, the quality yeah. of the record. Yeah, the not quality the, of the disc. Just the quality of the disc. So that's how it started back in 1982. And now oh, I'm that's... back in the pandemic, the pandemic <laughs> Filipinas. Wow, I've bought hundreds more. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You know, when the bug hits you, that's you know, it, it really know. bites, man. It really bites. It an addiction, an addiction. <laughs> you know, it's such a but it's such a beautiful addiction because at the end of the day, it's music. Yes. You know, it's music that you love. So for me, I don't know if it's a justification for me, but when I see an album, I'm like, okay, um, I can put off paying some bills. I gotta have this album. You know, I mean, that's just how it happens, right? What yeah. about you, Congressman Rufi? How did you get into it? Well, I, I got into it with you know, exposure to my mom. She loves music. Um, so when I was a kid, uh, we had this quadrosonic uh, stereo system in, in, the, in the house. Uh, yung more furniture than, than sound system uh -oh. equipment. Uh -oh. um, so she would play records. Um, so I got exposed and I, I, I helped her put on the record on, on the turntable, etc. And and then eventually my older brothers, uh, brother and sister, uh, they also got into music, so that was my exposure. But uh, when I entered in uh, entered high school, similar to the story of Rico, I also got involved in a mobile group, <laughs> <laughs> and I, I was I was the DJ. I was a spinner. Oh, you were the spinner. I, oh. Yeah, that, that's why behind me here is a setup. Um, I finally got permission from my wife to give me a little corner of the house where I was able to set up my system. <laughs> because before that, um, my, my gear was just in boxes, in, 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 in um, flight cases. But uh, eventually she agreed um, uh, to let me have a corner. And uh, so my records now have their own shelves. The <laughs> problem is space, the right? limitation. Eh? And um, yeah, it's been it's been uh, practically my whole life. I've I've been into music, although sometime in the mid '90s, yung collection ko ng records, vinyl, um, got destroyed by a typhoon. Because nilipad yung nilipad yung bubong namin, and my records were in in the attic. So I uh, very few lang yun na, na natira sa akin. And it was also during that time that CDs were coming into. Uh, the scene. So, imisip ko na, nawala na vinyl. I disposed of them. So, nawala na yung mga dati ko. And I went into digital eventually. Um, mm -hmm. But yung pang mixing ko, I went into digital, into uh, using software. But then, nung naging available ulit ang vinyl, I started collecting again. That's why. Uh, Kaya 10 crates. Yeah, 10 crates. <laughs> ten, 10 crates, tapos my shelves. My shelves na rin. <laughs> Meron na. Uh, see, Ellie, Ellie is commenting, especially on uh, Congressman Rufi and Rico's uh, comments. Mobile parties were all the rage back then. Yeah. Siyempre, <laughs> dapat nakakoach yan. Nakakoach yung mobile. Pamporma din, alam mo. Pamporma. Oh, oh. <laughs> if you were the DJ, wow, man. Sikat ka, man. Oh, so, Diego, I, what about you? So, Diego, being the youngest, I think, being the youngest here, how did you get into it? Yeah, so medyo iba yung story ako, no? Um, uh, well, nung namulat ako, um, yung parents ko, I was listening to their collection, which were cassettes, no? And then, um, but later on, um, in the 90s, my father started to get into records again, and then he started to buy, to collect, no? So I've been listening to his uh, records, mga mix ng mga jazz, rock, ganyan. Um, and once in a while, pag nasa ukay ako, I would see something I like. I would buy 
only one, two, ganyan. And then, nung mga, no college na ako, um, uh, siguro may baon na ako noon, ganyan, sabihin natin. At naka, tagante polo ako eh. So, nung college na ako, nasa TAF na ako. So, nakapukay na ako mag-isa, na-visit ko na yung mga, yung mga thrift, ganyan. So, on my free time, Siyempre, yung baon ko, pinagbibili ko ng mga mga funk, soul, mga ganyan, no? pinapakinggan ko. Kasi gusto ko nun dati, mga portis head, mga, mga trip hop, ganyan. So, I would I would listen to them. It, it had sampling in it and Beastie Boys. So, I would, ito yung record na galing dun. So, it started from there. And then eventually, when I was wor- out of college and working already, this is around... Um, so 2003 to 2005 that's when i went non-stop na and really went crazy on buying some itong time din to parang pabagsak na rin yung cds yeah tama so parang um, i was i was always collecting everything you know? i i love i love cassettes i love cds i love um i just love to collect music so so yeah, that's when I started. So, okay, that. so yeah, so, so so you know, music has always been a part of our lives in one form or another. Mm-hmm. When the formats started coming in, um, I remember growing up with just records, and then the cassettes came in, which were far more portable. So uh, it became easier in a sense, right? I we never in my, at least growing up in my family, we never thought of the collectability of it. And we were not really um, particular about the quality of the music that was coming out uh, in terms of the cassette. I only noticed that when the digital format started coming out. Where napapansin ko, you know, listening to, for example, the MP3s, um, sometimes the compression is too much on my ears. So parang bakit sumasakit yung tenga ko? You know, which is kind of weird. I never experienced before in the earlier formats. But there's something about vinyl that um, has, right now we are, we are uh, currently building a culture of vinyl. There's so many vinyl groups. There's so many resellers. There's so many record stores. There's so many people who are appreciating and going back to this format for various reasons. But tonight, I want to find out what your reasons are on, you know, why why vinyl in particular? Why records? So um, maybe we can start out with Diego. What What is it about vinyl that you love? The format itself, maybe the physical. Share your thoughts. Well, um, I guess ano. Um, no, nag start ako na. Nag, nag start ako na. Back to my story, I was buying with my own. Wala mm. pang mga new stores noon ulit. I mean, mm. wala wala na yung baso no no no. Uh, sorry, Toti, wala na noon no time na yun. At uh, forced ako to when I was uh, getting my vinyl fix, okay ako nag, nag-dig, no? So, um, nakakapag-research ako sa mga, sa mga online sites for music. Tapos, iba rin yung experience from, and yung CDs, parang, na outgrow ko na, naubos ko na yung mga trip ko dun sa Universal Sale, di ba, dito sa may, um, sa may uh, Quezon City, na max out ko na, yung nabili ko na mga 50 20 pesos sa mga paborito ko doon na mga new titles na nag-sale, di ba? So, parang nagkaroon ako ng bagong experience ng nagdidig ng, ng I didn't know what I'm gonna get, no? So, I was judging yeah. everything from the cover, ganun. But, of course, I was, um, I wasn't really digging like, because, ah, ang galing na tunog na to, ang brilyo na itong tunog na to pag sinaksa ko to doon sa, sa turntable ng airpads ko. Actually, no, I was, I was um, looking for the tracks that, uh, yun nga, was uh, funky tracks, um, yung, and I was, I was thinking about that. I didn't have two turntables at that time, but also I was thinking maybe in the future, if I'm gonna, if I was gonna DJ, I could use this one or, or, or I was into making tracks and maybe, maybe I could be a DJ shadow and sample this one day when I have the proper gear. Parang ganun eh. So I just kept them and then, um, I didn't, I, my, I was, yung Hitachi pa nga yung turntable ng Airpods ko, yung parang one brown um, wooden type, silver, uh-huh. um, that type. And it's not, and, and it sounded good, ganun. So, dun ako nag-explore, na minax out ko yun And then, eventually, when I was working na, I was, I found uh, two turntables na I could afford, ganyan. Tapos, um, uh, that's when I'm um, really collecting because, 
I wanted to play sets because at this time uh, I was already playing flux and uh, I was DJing CDs, um, spinning, and then uh, parang I was buying already yes 12 inches and disco and parang nisip ko na one day maybe beat match ko to for sure on vinyl. But I'm just gonna keep it there. I'll I'll practice with this 10 records kanyan. And also, regardless na it's usable, of course, important sa akin yung music talaga, yung tracks. Uh, dapat, um, um, dapat trip ko siya, no? Hindi yung, mm. hindi yung dahil uh, Bell Call Train siya or Miles Davis and stuff like that. Although my dad had those stuff, no? Um, and I, um, actually, only now ako nare-revisit yung mga stuff niya, gano'n, ah, okay, ito pala yan, parang, um, kaya pala ito masarap pagka, pagka lockdown masarap ito dahil parang naiwan mo lang siya and then you can clean house and listen to like you know like <laughs> like debate miles leaves a uh, bitches brew parang mas enjoyable siya um pero uh yeah at first i i went to the standards the beatles zombies ganyan yan. and then syempre the discover na pwede ka pala order ganyan and then and then of course the, all these new record stores are popping out so um, for me, music is first. You know, parang parang yeah. not not high fidelity, and uh, even I would buy records with scratches, just because yeah. um, I love the cover and kunyari one track. Ito lang yung kailangan ko, and the rest is scratch. Parang mm. I would go for it. At tama, na, sorry, nabutan ko naman yung fifty pesos na dig or twenty. Nabutan ko rin naman yun. Pero okay to ah. So yun yung the love of music lang talaga. Yeah. So primarily, that's the reason why. You, also, you know, you had these early hopes of like, you know, early dreams of being. Oh, if I'm a DJ, I'm gonna park these records first. I'm gonna practice with them, and eventually, I'm gonna bring them out. So it's gonna be something, you know, um, not only from your love of music but utilitarian also. Because my yeah, my yeah. parang my plan okay. Yeah. So parang my plan okay. Investment ko rin siya. Parang kasi hmm. like now, I, I this pandey. Ito parang nagbenta ako ng mga plaka ko hindi ko ginagamit. So so, kumita ko siya. Kumita ako sa kanya. Pinagbili ko ng mga bago kong trip, di ba? So, bago na yung taste ko eh. Ngayon, from before. Mm. So, I think maganda rin siyang investment. Um, yun. Cool. Alright. Thank you, Jago. Alright, uh, Congressman, let's go to you. Well, my vinyl. Um, my vinyl, it's uh, primarily because of nostalgia. Um, good times, eh. It, it, it brings me back to the good times of of the eighties, like Rico, no? um, and 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 my childhood uh, during the time that uh, we were young at home and uh, uh, seeing our parents play their music. So, ano siya? Parang nandun yung nostalgia primarily. Um, second, parang it gives me the feeling of um, yung performance ng artist is live, no? Because uh, mm-hmm. from 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 the sound and voice that they they make uh, performing. Uh, translated siya into the grooves, eh, di ba? Diretso, analog, eh. So, pag na-playback mo siya, I have this feeling na parang we're, I'm listening to the performance again. It's not something that was processed through uh, CPU. Parang ganun, no? And, uh, and as a DJ, may, medyo yung mga tito DJ, <laughs> feeling na feeling ng mga tito DJ, eh, mas, mas ito yung simula, eh, yung vinyl, eh. No? Pero actually, excuse lang yun kasi hindi na, hindi na namin kaya sabayan yung digital and electronic stuff. <laughs> Pero it, it's it's gana na talaga no? for for us na yung um, got into it um, starting with the uh, vinyl records uh, yung nostalgia talaga for me. And um, dalo na yung mga binibili ko I, I have a preference for yung mga ano na yung used uh, mm-hmm. na, na records kasi again like kunyari yung isang record na nakita ko sa store um Yung, yung pressing niya was in the 80s for an 80s music, new wave or something like that. Mas gusto ko yun. Uh, even if kung nyari may lumabas na bagong press, um, mas gusto ko yung luma. Kasi na, again, it is, this is a relic from my generation. Parang ganun. Eh. So it's and, mo, and most of the nostalgia. Parang may, may continuity siya. If you get something that is 80s music pressed in the 80s, released in the 80s, it, it mm-hmm. makes it a little bit more pure in a sense of how we're listening to it today. This yeah. wasn't a digitally recorded album remastered for vinyl. Mm-hmm. 
You know, mm, it, it there's, a, there's a continuity that goes for yeah. it. Yeah, diba? that's true. That's true. Uh-oh. And then also, of course, that depends on your collection because if you're getting new bands, most of them record um, uh, digitally now, but they're remastered mm-hmm. um, back then. That's why my collection is. I try to. I try to. It's, of course, it's a very small collection compared to you guys, but it's. Uh, I try to um, get the albums that were actually recorded in analog and released mm-hmm. in analog because the, I, I I do prefer that continuity. In that sense, because this is the format that these things were recorded and you know mixed and mastered and released for, so there's a continuity that I that I do enjoy, mm-hmm. and of course the nostalgia factor is fantastic because yeah. you know it brings you back to better days, right? Yes. I see, I see, I see, I see, I see Rico agreeing. Rico, how do you? Okay, so you you it's stopped like, for a I'm while and really? then you continued. <laughs> you, know, you know what I like about uh, I like the twelve inch. Oh, I. I it's because of the size. It's because okay. of the size. I never really collected 45s. They were too yeah. small for me. You know? <laughs> and you know what? What I really like about um, the 12-inch um, records is that you can flip them around. You know? Just flipping them around. And um, I was like uh, Congressman uh, Rufi and, and Diego. I was like a, um, like a, like a DJ pretender. I wanted, to, <laughs> I wanted to spin. But that's how I got, I, I, I got myself. I told my dad. Dad, can I get two turntables? I got a Sansui and a Technique. <laughs> and then you would take out the rubber and then replace it with felt. You know, the felt paper. So you could spin it, right? Oh, oh. But, you know what? Um, I just couldn't get into the beat, man. I just couldn't <laughs> get into the beat. I just couldn't spin. So I said, most probably, <laughs> I was frustrated. I couldn't spin like my like my friends in, in high school, in the disc mobile group. So I said, okay. <laughs> I'll hang up. I'll hang up. I'll, I'll, I won't. I won't try it anymore. I don't think I can do it. So I just basically just continued uh, collecting uh, vinyls. So mm-hmm. and it, it it also looks so nice, no? When uh, you set it up in a cabinet rather mm-hmm. than the small forty fives. Mm-hmm. So it, it really looks great. Plus, you know, the design, the artwork of um, the front and the back cover, and mm-hmm. what I really like about that's why. I, I really like collecting uh, 12-inch remixes because they have different versions. There's yeah. the Jelly Bean Benitez <laughs> mix. There is the 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 uh, the London the UK mix, the US mix. I just like listening. BMC. Even though it's the same song, let's say like Aha's um, "Take on Me." Mm. It has so many versions. Or Naked Eyes, always something there to remind <laughs> me. There's so many versions. If there's a Japan press, a UK press, a US, I would buy all of them. You know, <laughs> if, if, it, if, it, if it would have a different mix. So that's really my love uh, up until today. That's what I do. I just search for 12-inch extended versions and remixes. But of course, on, on the side, once in a while, because I do love uh, musical theater like yourself, Jamie. Oh. I love to sing. But I also collect a lot of, you know, um, uh, we call this uh, musical, musicals, mu- uh, musical vinyls from Miss Saigon to Les Miserables to Phantom of the Opera, like Matilda. <laughs> because I, when I travel overseas, I, I'm just so exposed to this huge, <laughs> you know, collection. No? <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> all right. So, so Tati, what about you? I mean, I think uh, out of all of us in, in, in you know, in, in this show right now, <laughs> you've done it all. <laughs> You know, no, not not. I wouldn't say the oldest, but I think you know, f- physically, I think physically, you have had more records pass through your hands and through your ears than the rest of us combined. And you've <laughs> DJed, you have um, propagated. Uh, you're part of the culture um, that has uh, exploded these days, especially. But what is it about vinyl that you absolutely love that has lasted throughout these years? Um, it's 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 really for me. It's really the me- the medium that I enjoy the most. Um, initially, of course, when I was in grade school, I can only afford. Well, not even I didn't even buy it, but it was just cassettes, right? Um, but then once I got hold of uh, an imported vinyl, uh, I, I I did buy local stuff as well from SM and all that. But 
by grade five or six, um, we went to Hong Kong and then I got hold of mm -hmm. my first few imported records. And that's really, I think that's when it, it happened for me. Plus the fact that my aunt used to send me from, from London uh, records from there, from there as well. So, and I think what makes it special is really, I think the others have mentioned it, it's, is that, um, you know, it's, it's the cover, the artwork, the smell, um, and the sound, you know, I mean, I know it's cliche, but it, it really is warm, warmer. Yeah. And um, there's just something to it. I mean, the, the sound of the needle dropping on the record itself. Um, I mean, I, I make as much as possible, I make sure that my records are clean and no pops or ticks, but I don't even mind those things uh, because it's part of the, the experience. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, from, from way back, in, in fact, I didn't mention that, that I did uh, spin initially uh, with a mobile group as well in when I was first year <laughs> high school um, and just like how they started um, and I was the, the only one who went purchaser spin. <laughs> <laughs> I was the purchaser <laughs> and the DJ as well so um, <laughs> so you can imagine it's that um, the thirst for wanting more you know um, for the mobile, for myself, and it's it's all it's also a competition in in a way. Back then, it is it is, I think it is still up to now. But it's a friendly competition. But I think it's what what makes you, you know, in, an individual in what you collect and what you listen to. So there are obviously there are certain stuff that we all listen to. I mean, you know, if we're all in a certain age or or era then yes we come across certain artists that we all like but but as as an individual you you have your own preferences as well and that's what i have uh, built or developed through the years i think that's a great thing to to touch on because I, your your collection i mean um it's like essentially your taste in music it represents your taste in music mm -hmm. and your taste in music uh, represents who you are it represents who you are um, yes. What you listen to, what you love, mm -hmm. what you collect, what you can't let go of, what you will hunt for perpetually, and also there's that that idea of you know when you when you go to a party and it's a listening party, the but was my bit bit combining records more. There's always that factor now, but you have to listen to this. You know what I mean? <laughs> there's always that as well, but it's also but you know in any format that that's that's very present also because. We all have very diverse tastes in music, and it's also um, a point of individuality. We have a comment here from my wife, actually, who's watching now, and it's actually her collection. She wants me to say that it's her collection of vinyl. I just assist her in curating, and in, you know, it's a very good um, uh, gift to give during anniversaries. But basically, she fell in love with vinyl because... Uh, she says, I don't just hear the room it was recorded in, especially with older records. It's like I can feel the air in that room on my skin. <laughs> and that's a great, that's a great description. Like yeah. when you, Toti, when you're talking about like, you know, the pops, you know, when you, when you hear the needle drop, it adds to the entire experience. And of course, you know, you, you, with, with the cassette era and the CD era, it just it became very, very easy mm -hmm. to just pop it in and play it, especially mm -hmm. at parties. But with, with records, you know, I didn't grow up in that era. I grew up in the cassette area, era. My collections were primarily cassettes. I had to learn how not to be too drunk before you drop the needle. Because, <laughs> di, di ba, parang, ay, jahe, nag-false start ako, di ba? And, you know, you're at a party and all that. So there, there's, a, there's a certain skill, and it's a ritual of taking out the, the record from the case and all that. And there's a, now that whole culture mm -hmm. is taking off. And Tati, I'd like to direct this question to you in terms of um, the, the record culture now exploding. What kind of people do you get in your stores? The titos and the titas. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, man. I mean, look, Jego's not a tito. <laughs> we have those as well. <laughs> we, 
we do have them coming in as well. But um, at my shop, it's really a lot of young, young people um, who are the minority, I think, in the Philippines or at least in Manila. Uh, I said they're more the more adventurous ones who who also um, happen to to listen to what I suggest to them and then they on their own have their you know their own uh, uh, taste um, and as far as you know what they see in the store and it's you know they 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 sort of uh, have this this uh, sort of family th family tree going on like uh, I like this because this is this 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 came from this label and then things like that and then also the store I think speaks for itself it's uh, it's a store it's a shop that's a bit on the special specialty side it's a special yeah. specialized um, uh, specialty store uh, hold on my, my laptop's gonna <laughs> die um, because I specialize in in a lot of uh, post punk and new wave, new so wave. we call you will enjoy the new store. Wave. But yeah, <laughs> you wave, you wave. Yeah, so, uh, in, in new wave, sell, uh, just brand new, brand new uh, sealed um, uh, vinyls, or also pre loved and used. Yes, pre loved and and uh, new ones. Also wow. from these artists that you like. Oh, wow. so you might expect that you know, some art, some <laughs> someone from the eighties, someone from the eighties might be, uh, uh, is probably, you know, not doing anything. But you would be surprised that there was a that there was a release, uh, like a de or demo album, or uh, a lost, um, yes, you know, I'm or a so special talking. anniversary. Yeah. It, it's those things, but um, yeah. But anyway, going back to the specialty, it's uh, uh, yeah. It, it it my story is more on the indie and uh, mm. uh, electronic avant-garde um, stuff. So it's a it's a mixed bag, but it's all mm. not so mainstream. In fact, not really mainstream. I don't sell, <laughs> you know, I don't sell. Uh, um, Taylor, yeah, yeah, I don't even know the, the names of the top forty acts, but uh, Taylor Swift. Yeah, I don't. I don't. Um, nothing wrong with that. I mean, I understand yeah. the, the pop side, but yeah. Yeah. it's not something that I would sell. So, so basically, your your store, your story so is there. a testament to your 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 tastes and the people that you attract. You can actually. I mean, I love that because it brings back the old school neighborhood feel, the word of mouth feel about you know sharing music. Um, now in, in the digital age, yeah, it's so easy to share a song. You know, you post a link yeah. on Spotify. Um, but my my thing is, how do you discover new music? And I always go by a person's recommendation, because that's how I discovered music. Pare, you have to listen to this. Pare, I think type moto, and I think Toti, you um, you have been a you know a, a Yoda for us, <laughs> you know, because um, basically pointing us in the direction of where to go if you like this i can introduce you to this if you like this these guys also did this now rico rico looks like he's ready to go to your shop right now uh, well, i'm canceling my news <laughs> program tomorrow uh i'm gonna stay in uh, his shop all day <laughs> well fantastic you know that that's that's what's nice about you know the, the whole experience of going into a physical in a physical space and yeah. looking to the physical albums there's something about it that I, I guess it's also empowering because you have a a, uh, a tactile experience of going. Yes. Mm, okay, but mm -hmm. you know, you open you you open it. You you look at well, you don't open it, but if it's if it's a gatefold, you look at the the artwork mm -hmm. and all that. If it if it jumps out at you, it's a much better format in its introduction to you because the artwork's bigger. Eh? You see these mm -hmm. cassettes. for mm -hmm. for me, word of mouth because a lit, a lit. Eh? You know? Like the 45s, no? The 7 inch. What more, oh, what more digital? Yeah, digital, there's nothing. I mean, basically, you know, you're listening to their music and then you have to Google them. You know what I mean? <laughs> and there's no, there's no real assurance unless, for me, in my case, 
how I discover music is recommendations from people that I I admire, I respect, I uh, I uh, I play with in a band. You know, it's like Jamie, you have to listen to this. I think I think this will be, you know, right up your alley. And it's always a personal connection. That's why I love the idea of the record store. Whenever I go into, you know, the the weekend markets, the Salcedo market, the Legacy mm. market, I always pass by there. And inevitably, you know, I, I don't pass by when I know I have very, very little budget. Um, but inevitably, I'm still drawn into it. And, you know, nine out of ten times, I'm going to find something I love. And I'm going to take it home with me. Simply because it's important to have. it. Like Toti yeah. says, it defines you who you are. Your tastes define who you are. And this is a physical representation. But the culture now, the culture now, it's funny that uh, Toti says, you know, you have, he has a younger generation coming yeah. in. Um, and discovering what you, like, for example, Rico, have known, um, you know, because you grew up with you grew up with this format, mm-hmm. basically. Um, but do you have a community, fellow lovers of vinyl that you, you know, I mean, pre-pandemic, basically, but you know, uh, like that you that you share your collection with, or do you have listening parties? You no, know, even even before. Well, well, you came back as a pandemic, nay. Yes, you know? that's right. Up, up, because- you have, any friends who share your love? Do I have friends who share my love? No. Wow. I think it's me who, who, who loves these uh, records. I just buy what I want to buy, and what is available in the market, and I just uh, listen to them. I mean, even my wife doesn't listen to my, uh, to my vinyls. It's just me who listens uh, to all of my records. So, um, you know, I'm so thankful to also to my wife that uh, she has also given me, just like uh, Rufi here, a, a space where we could put <laughs> our little toys and uh, little hobbies, <laughs> even <laughs> though it fills up rooms. <laughs> so, no, I, I don't have any uh, listening partner. It's just basically me. So, Rico, being on this show... <laughs> Being on the show, and once you get into Totti's shop, Totti is going to guide you into all the groups, all the communities. He was he's basically gonna be your I will be your new based friend, on your taste. Basically. <laughs> <laughs> Totti, I'm not kidding, man. The way Rico looks now, he wants to go to your shop like right now, but it's curfew. You can't you can't go out of the house yet. <laughs> no, but you know what? I have an IATF a pass. Uh, <laughs> I can need your uh, checkpoints. <laughs> We're only open on weekends, but I will open the shop. <laughs> I will open the shop for you tomorrow. If yeah, uh, unfortunately, you know, I've gotten stuck in the eighties. So I just really, <laughs> I always tell friends if you have any. That's, that's, that's 80s, not a problem. Yeah, I, I, I'm there. I'm there for real life. Well, yeah, the, of course, everybody wants to collect uh, Siona dancing's more to lose. I have the CD, <laughs> I have the seven inch. But I don't have the 12 inch. And I, I know it's an arm and a leg. I'm not sure if everybody knows about Shona Dancing's More to Lose. But it became popular in the 80s when it was uh, introduced by uh, RT. 99.5 yeah, RT. Yeah. So, I mean, it wasn't a hit whatsoever yeah, a different in the UK. But here, it was a massive hit. And it's selling for uh, like, for like twenty to 25,000 just for the 12 inch single. Wow, that's a lot yeah. of money, man. That's, that's a, lot a lot of money. money. Yeah. That's I so funny that's about Shona funny. dancing. I've been hearing about Shona dancing, and I had no idea what it was. And apparently, it's on a lot of people, like collectors, like it's their yes, holy it's, grail. Yes, and then I have grail. to, go- I have to Google it because I'm not even sure if I'm gonna like the song, much <laughs> less shell out twenty five grand for it. You know, I guess that's well, the basis of it. The lead singer is now the star of The Office. Yeah, see it's, Ricky Gervais. It's, yes, Ricky, Ricky Gervais. Gervais. And even Ricky Gervais <laughs> doesn't even want even want to talk about um, Shiona dancing because it was a flop. <laughs> it was a flop except here. Except here. <laughs> here, yeah. That's it, it's only a it's a Filipino thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it's primarily like it's a, apparently it's a really big thing if it's going for that much money. And it wasn't even a hit. It didn't even break the Billboard Top 100. It's such a it's a specialty of a specialty that's ex- exclusive to just us. So I suppose yeah. that increases its rarity and its value because it's just us who apparently yeah. who are crazy for it. 
Um, what about you, Congressman Rufi? Do you have do you have anybody that shares your vinyl passion? Um, yeah, uh, I have a friend, my high school buddy. We're we're still in touch now, so uh, we basically share the passion for music. And uh, before the pandemic, I, I, I we had a, a bar, a restaurant restaurant bar, and uh, we had vinyl night. Uh, so so we even though during weekdays there weren't much people going, we still played the music because we we wanted to play the music. So. <laughs> Um, but the pandemic hit and <laughs> we had to close it down. So I, I hope that uh, in better times we can still do it again. Um, but but for now, we just enjoy it on a personal level. So well, that's it. I, I, I have hope that eventually, you know, when we get a grip on this pandemic and things open up again. I mean, as, a, as, a, as an artist and a performer myself with zero shows happening because all my shows got shut down, I'm actually expecting... A uh, a renaissance of the arts, because mm. if you coop up all these artists and all these passionate people, and all these mm. people who are dying to go out and listening to music and dance, yeah. Yeah. and get together and enjoy a drink or two while listening to good music, we're gonna be an ex we're, we're gonna experience a, a renaissance mm. in in the era that's post pandemic, where all of yeah. us are gonna be going out, and you know it's it's funny that now um, when you're sharing with your friends. And you can create it on a. Uh, it's an intimate. It's an intimate level of sharing. Mm. But when you when you up it up to a bigger scale, like when you open a record store or you open a bar to share your collection, that mm. is the best way, I think, um, yeah. in terms of a bigger scale of sharing your taste, what you like, that defines who you are. And I love that angle of it. Um, yeah. economy, what about you, Jego? Yes, I'm sure you belong to communities, pare. Mm -hmm. uh, I do have friends that we talk about vinyl all the time and um, um, they post their records on Instagram and Facebook and um, we really talk daily, non-stop, share about records <laughs> and vinyl. Um, yeah, yes. And um, especially before the pandemic, I used to DJ a lot and a lot of vinyl nights also. And um, it's nonstop with them. I mean, with all the the your peers when you're playing with them. So when you when spot you're playing with the, fellow when you're playing with fellow DJs, do you share your records? Like, um, can I borrow your? No, can I play it right now? Like that? Oh, you mga ganon. May may protocol ba yon? No, pwede naman kung papayagan ka. <laughs> I mean, no, nakita ko meron ko ganyan, pwede ko papatutukin niyan ngayon. So, I feel lost it, I guess. At siguro hindi naman siya isa scratch ng malupit, 'di ba? <laughs> but but kunyari, but 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 if if ever I'm coming after or kunyari, you're in a DJ night and then a popular scratch DJ comes in, kunyari, DJ Cubert or whatever. If he wants to scratch your records, of course you'll let him, even though you took this your most expensive one in your collection. So <laughs> I would probably let him do it. So um, I, if somebody wanted to play my record, yeah, sure, I would borrow it. Yeah, as long as he returns it, right? As long as he returns it, <laughs> <laughs> I know where you live, man. Pag a group kayo, tapos syempre nakainom na kayo lahat. Halo halo na yung nag hindi mo na alam kung saan napatong mo yung isang plaka, di ba? Minsan na uwi nila, tapos tatawagan mo siya the next day, tapos, uwi, nandyan pa ba yung, nandyan ba yung ano ko, ganito, ganito, ganyan. So, minsan nasa kanila. <laughs> minsan. <laughs> minsan. <laughs> minsan. Yeah. That's, fun, that, that's fantastic. I mean, even as a, as a, as a community, um, within the community, as DJs, I mean, you guys use this during your sets. It's like, you know, um, I know a lot of musicians, uh, like for example, a guitar player, hindi lang basta basta magpapahiramin ng gitara niya. Mm. Eh, ganun din yung level ng mga plaka niyo eh. Di ba? <laughs> but it's nice to know that there are there are communities that, uh, the DJ, at least the DJ community, at least kung kilala mo, or at least kilala, alam mong hindi niya isa-scratch ng todo, na magpapahiram ka din. And I think that's fantastic because, again, it goes into the spirit of sharing. 
Um, I just want to do a shout out. Boyet Seasons in the house. He's on the comment section. He's saying hello to everybody. Hello. Papa B, hello, how are you? Hello. Hello, Boyet. Going back naman to show na dancing. Nag-comment si Mike Dukusin. Um, si Juno Obanda just sold his copy. Oh, you know? 13K? 13K. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And I'm, I'm sure Juno knowing because Juno's been raising funds. We've been raising funds for Juno's family's medical expenses. Juno, and I'm sure... Kung meron kang kilalang sure, iba, 13K. Ayan, oh, ayan. Oh, ayan nagahanap. <laughs> nagahanap. There we go. Diba? There we go. But we you know, the, Jamie, talking about oh. you know, your, your, your personal uh, vi vinyls, right? Hmm. I think you, what you have to do is you have to um, have uh, Roby stickers made saying Diego Mapa Collection, Rufi diba? Vialton Collection, Ricky oh. Collection. I mean, parang hindi mawawalaan, di ba? Even though you <laughs> lend out uh, your your records to to friends or to uh, friends of friends, it will eventually come back to you because they know it is your record. Oh, true. But then, <laughs> okay, so but if you put it, don't forget. But, but if you put it on your albums, you know, and you put it on the cover, does that, you know, devalue it? You know, yes. in that sense. Oh uh, yeah, it but, does. But if you if you're not selling them, I I, I don't think true. like me, I don't sell any of my records. I just accumulate, so I'm not selling any of them. So I, I can just put, I can just put uh, <laughs> this is <I> mine. Put, <laughs> <laughs> May magandang tanong dito si uh, Pablo Toledo. Um, do you go for the best of? Or the album itself uh, of an artist or a band? Oh, maganda. Well, you know, Rico goes for the. You know, the 12 inch, you know, other the remixes or the versions, but you know, as a casual collector, um, who'd like to take this? Uh, who'd like to take this question? When I'm the could. best of, oh, go, go, Jago, go. Um, yeah, why not? Because ano, it's a good start to, kunyari, um, it's a good start para hindi ka mag spend much, sure. diba? so mm. parang gateway yung best of to, yes. to a bigger malimo after the tong best of. Mag, mag flip ka na dun sa artist and uh, it's a cheap way to to educate yourself muna di ba mm. parang you can't buy all the Pink Floyds all at once right so yeah. so or actually nor nor would I actually with with all the Pink Floyd music, start also Roxy music na best of them eh. Or so, with the with the with the Pink Floyd specifically for the Pink Floyd there are a lot of albums of theirs that I would not buy because I just can't listen to them you know the listenability i mean like i'm not going to buy uma guma or atom heart mother because they're just way too far out but <laughs> dark side of the moon okay game diba? Yeah. you know that 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 is always a, a go-to album in that sense so if you're going to look if you're looking into a discovering an artist the best of is always a great introduction mm -hmm. so you have an idea of their sound their songs and then you know you can do it's easier to do research now um, because then you can see, okay, you, if you like a certain song by an artist, you can Google what album did that come from. And then you can see how strong that album is. Uh, and that leads you to discovering or going into a deep dive of the artist themselves. So, Magandayan, thank you. Thank you, Jago, for that. Because it's a great introduction. Um, although for records, although for records, madali naman mag-audition ngayon kasi may Spotify. So, mag-audition ka lang kasi mahal eh. <laughs> Mahal. You know, I tried to personally stay away from best ofs in the vinyl because I have, you know, in my collection, and we're going to talk about collections next, time, huh? guys. In my collection, I try, I'm trying to uh, amass a collection of the iconic rock <coughs> albums because I'm a rock guy. So the mm -hmm. iconic rock albums. So, you know, in, in this sense, I have, you know, my only show and tell for tonight, of course, is I'm going to start out with this album, which is, of course, going back to Pink Floyd. This is Dark Side of the Moon. Mm -hmm. And we got this, you know, uh, my wife, my wife decided she wants to collect, you know, we were in um, a uh, flea market in Paris mm -hmm. when she, when we bumped into an entire section that is just the records. It was the size of a football field. Imagine a Changge, but the size <laughs> of a football field. Mm -hmm. And all these record stores were just there selling their wares, right? Parang, parang Salcedo Market on Record fair. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a record fair. But then, no, but then it, it's funny because it was a, it was a huge, um, huge flea market. And, you know, they had sections for ito, dito clothes, dito jackets, mm. dito head shops, dito hardware, dito records. 
So when we mm-hmm. bumped into that and we figured out that um, rock and roll records, particularly American rock records in Paris, are, are quite cheap because they're a jazz country. So if you wanted to buy Miles Davis, that was 20 euros and up. But you mga rock, like we got this Pink Floyd for something like, you know, 8 to 9 euros. And that's a, for me, that's a, that's a steal. It even has the posters of Pink Floyd inside. But going into your collection, let's go into a more personalized taste. Like we know, we know Rico collects the 80s. He's very adamant about that and the 12 <laughs> inches, right? But if you can define your collection by, by you know, um, a genre or what, what, what exactly is your taste, what would that be? So, Congressman, let's start with you. Well, um, well, mine is eclectic. Um, majority are 80s, um, new wave and jazz. Mm-hmm. But I also buy uh, records um, like uh, really old music, um, something from the 50s and 60s. And, and I even have um, uh, um, Ilocano records. Um, wow. So it's it's going back to my my parents' lineage, their Ilocanos. So when I when I saw an Ilocano record one time, I bought it, and um, it, it depends really on the mood when I when I'm browsing, uh, when I'm digging, and I see yung music na pa na gusto ko lang talaga siya. So pero majority talaga is 80s, um, um, new wave and uh, jazz. Um, pero ko ano ako ano maging maging, maging trip eh on 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 uh, a shopping spree na naghahanap ng vinyl mm. yun kukunin ko yan basta nagbigla ako na gustuhan that's how i buy o impulse talaga <laughs> it depends naman on how you're man, feeling uh, Rufilo, pakita naman ng some of your uh, re- records oh, okay so okay let's let's go in let's <laughs> go into ano this na <laughs> let's go into this now we've been eagerly awaiting nagpakita na ako ng record eh so okay sige let's go into this na so we're going to go into your top three, all right? Top three records that you can actually show us. Toti has actually expressed like pa- sl- slight panic because <laughs> over 20,000 records, he's like, how am I going to show my top three? But you know what? It all depends. I mean, each each record that you get has a story behind it, you know? So I, I, it's, uh, it's the stories that we're after and why this is valuable to you and why this is meaningful to you. So, Congressman, let's start with you. Ah, okay, start oh. with me. Top three. Um, South, Pacific. South Pacific. South Pacific. Why? <laughs> <Nice. laughs> well, bakit? At una, this is an old record. Uh, an this one. This one is an old, old, old record. Um, I was named after the actor, Rosano ah. Brazzi. Mm-hmm. And then my parents um, loved listening to this and eventually uh, it pass, got passed on to me. Napanood ko yung movie then. Hindi ko napanood ang play, pero napanood ko yung movie. And I really loved it. Uh, again, uh, good memories. Uh, Congressman, and, if, I can, just, if yes. I can just add, uh, in terms of South Pacific, kung napanood mo yung play, you would have seen me as a child kasi may dalawang bata sa play eh. Um, uh, that that sing uh, di temwa porqua. That yeah. was me and my sister Muni for, re- for the repertory Philippines production of South Pacific in Meralco Theater. Wow! Uh, in, that, the 19, I, that, in the nineteen. Oh my God! That's in the eighties, man. That's like 82, 83. Yeah. So, nadagdagan na ng value to kasi may connect na sa'yo. Eh. Yeah. See, I, can, I can totally relate with that LP. Okay, what's your next? What's your and next one? this one is uh, Stanley Clark. Ooh. Specifically, ang gusto ko dito yung um, uh, Together, Together Again. And ito kasi medyo memorable kasi if you can see, medyo worn out siya. Part ito ng collection ko na binagyo. So ah. it is a todo sa mga nag-survive. Uh, oh. So medyo may value sa akin siya, sentimental. Masyado akong sentimental eh. And uh, finally, combined itong dalawa. Mm. Oh, you two yeah. were and ano yung isa? Modern English, modern, modern English. English. Yeah. Oh, modern Kaya English. Kaya naman naging significant sa akin to because these were the first these, these, these two it. songs was the were the songs that I learned how to beat match. Yeah. Uh, ah. the, the, the song that I used was um, <laughs> New Year's Day and um, Hands Across the Sea. Pinag-beat match ko siya. 
Nice. And di, di, at dito ako natuto sa dalawang songs na to. And uh, final trivia there. Natuto ako mag beat match ng walang pitch control. Yun. It, it was just the fingers na kinakontrol ko yung pitch niya, <laughs> yung speed niya. Uh, ang ginawa ko pa doon, kinuha ko yung my, my, pe, my mom had a, a quadrosonic uh, in the living room and a small player in her room. Ginawa ko, dinisassemble ko yung turntable from the one in her room. I brought it dun sa quadrosonic. I opened it up. One turntable, kinabit ko sa uh, left channel, the other one in the right channel. Tapos yung balance, yun ang ginawa kong cross, ano, cross fader. <laughs> Nari ganun ako natuto mag-mix, mag-beat ma- beat match with those two songs. Kaya memorable yan. <laughs> nice. Fantastic. Thank you, Congressman. Oh, le- you. Jago, let's go to you. Yes. Um, top three, ah. Konti naman, Jamie. <laughs> eh, <laughs> when I started collecting, uh, syempre, hinanap ko muna yung Beach Boys Pet Songs. Yun. Although, this is not the, as you can see, iba yung cover na. Dig ko lang to sa Kamuning. Eh. Actually, 500 pesos, I remember. So... <laughs> Yeah. That's that's an iconic album, Pai. That's an album I'm still looking for. That's on my list. And then <laughs> when I discovered that uh, you could buy new stuff, uh, I got the Dude, air. Air. Moon Safari. Because uh well, nung lumabas tong album CD pa lang ako tapos um, mm. nung finally na ano, you know, Okay to from start to end. Eh. So I I think yeah. must have to for those who are starting to collect. Actually maganda tong start. Maganda yan. I love, I love, love that album. And those, uh, actually, marami akong gustong tending in the ako, pero ito, I can't get enough of Cocktail this album. Twin. Cocktail, Cocktail Twins. Cocktail Twins. Yeah, you wave. Na, actually, ito yung favorite ko ang Cocktail Twins. So, alam ko, marami iba, but ito yung favorite ko. Yeah. All right, fantastic. Sure. Oh, we have, we have, we have time, pa. We have time, pa. And let's add two, because si congressman nag cheat na. Eh. Um, <laughs> following the rules. Eh. <laughs> Pero okay lang. I mean, like, look at it. We're all eagerly like awaiting also, the, the LP. Also, my bloody Valentine. This is my favorite one. 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 This is my uh, this is one of the, I guess, earlier reissues. Nice. And, um, and then, my first digs ko, uh, syempre, no, um, after you've seen Pulp Fiction and Jungle Boogie, um, nung nanap ko to sa ukay, uh, sobrang panalo, uh, from start to end, uh, essential tong uh, wild and peaceful, cool in the gang. Yeah. Nice. So, uh, straight up party to. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, you can play the start and uh, and sampled by a lot. So, yeah. Okay, I have to get I have to get that on my list as well. You know, it's nice because when you see other people's collections, you know, you um you actually remember what you want to look for also. <laughs> you know, in that sense. Oh, nag 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 message yung offshore music. Kahit daw five more, tuloy natin yung top ten. <laughs> Babalik tayo sa'yo, Congressman. O, tuloy natin yung top 10. Oh, yeah. oh. Oh, Diego, tuloy mo yan. We're, we're, we're with you. So, let's 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 go to your next five. Dala 50 eh. Dala 50. <laughs> oh, tuloy, tuloy mo lang, Diego. Tuloy, tuloy. Okay, I'm going be cool in the gang. Oh, this one is... Let's see it. So actually, this is his last album before he died. No, he made this in his deathbed in the hospital. Wow. So um, uh, basa essential to for beat makers, yeah. And uh, more about sampling. Ito at the avalanches. Mm-hmm. This is uh, since I left you. There's they are uh, also a sampling band, and um. Amazing sampling work on this one. So um, actually, there's a reissue now. So um, you should check it out if you don't know the avalanches. Final ko na bayan seven. I'm I'm actually taking notes now. Flaming lips. Ito. Uh, oh. Yoshimi battles the pink robots. Ito yata yung favorite 
Well, dalawa yung favorite ko. Yung soft bullet yun, tsaka ito. Actually, this is on a... Uh, this is a red vinyl. A red uh, vinyl? Oh, oh that's so, nice. Ito, as in, ano, meron akong CDR nito, and finally, uh, siyempre, in-upgrade ko. Eight? That's eight? Okay. Um, ito, okay, okay. Uh, future Listening, Toa Te. Uh, ito yes. Ito, one of the albums na... Uh, electronic albums that I dug in a, a CD and uh, maybe one of my early imports. So, si Toti, may bagong album na ito. Actually, Yun, sabihin ko pa lang. <laughs> Oo oh, nga, oh, nga, nakita ko yung post mo. Pero ang galing na ito, ganda, Technova, um, ito yung gateway ko to, ano, to Toti nga. And of course, you should dis- listen to D-Light, which is part of, mm, is, yes. is part of D-Light, right? Yeah. So, nine, no? And, um, <laughs> Binibilan talaga eh. Oo oh, nga eh. May countdown eh. <laughs> well, ito, pandemic find ko to. So, so, binili ko to sa Facebook. So, yung singles ng The Fall. Actually, meron din ako netong CDR lang na binurn ko sa kabanda ko. And I know you should have the other albums. Pero, like Best Sauce that you said you didn't like, this is a good start for The Fall. So, um... I think uh, okay siyang investment kasi ang daming the fall eh. So, hindi mo alam. Oo nga. So, a- actually, ito, bilhin mo to sa DJ set. Sobrang may fall fan, play mo na to. Huwag mo na, iwanan mo na. I guess, okay na siya. <laughs> so, so, ito yun. Um, a pandemic find. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you That's for a lot. That's fantastic. That's <laughs> fantastic. Thank you, Diego. Oh, Congressman, let's go back to you. Let's go back to you. <laughs> Go back to me ito. Um, I'm sure magustuhan ni Rico ito. Ay, nako. <laughs> the Pesh Mode. Mode. <laughs> Live version ng two-minute warning. Oh my <laughs> ito talaga yung... Uh, nung nakita ko ito, hindi ko na pinakawalan. Because really hard to find yung uh, live version. Because that's oh. the version that's, that was played during the parties. <laughs> Ah, yun yun, yun yun. Eh <laughs> <laughs> ito naman galing sa parents ko rin from way back nung bata pa kami. Ari Bella Ponte. Ari Ponte. Ito yung yes. pinapakinggan namin yes. sa kanya na uh, Quadro Sonic. Kaya ano sa akin to. Uh, very memorable yan. Yes. This was the first uh, jazz album na binili ko noong 80s. MFSB. Stanley. Oh, in old, Sa- old San Juan. No? Oh, yeah. And dito pa yung price tag niya sa Anson, 26 pesos. <laughs> <laughs> Anson. Naku. Anson. Oh, uh, Diego, nagsabi si Eli, great top 10 daw. Ganda ng top 10 mo, Diego. Sabi ni Eli. I'm sure Eli's also taking down notes, eh. Brian Hill head din yan, eh. Ayaw lang niya mag-guest, eh. <laughs> Nag-guest na naman. Ko, dalawang beses na. <laughs> <laughs> Eli, kamusta ka dyan? Ito et, representative nung, uh, kung, kung nung 80s, uh, meron akong uh, New Order, Depeche Mode, uh, The Smiths. Y- yun, ang, yun ang ano ko talaga. During this time, contemporary na ngayon, Coldplay. Yeah. Sila yung aking sila yung aking uh, uh, Depeche Mode, The Smiths, and New Order. Ko. So during during these times, ito na. Um, and I also like collecting ano, um, soundtrack uh, uh, records. Mm-hmm. And lalo na ito, this is Mike Post. Kasi mga theme songs, uh, theme songs ng mga TV series TV before. Show. Lalo na ang oh, favorite ko dito, Hill Street Blues and The uh, Greatest oh, American yeah. Hero. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yan panahon natin yan. Greatest American Hero every Saturday at <laughs> yeah. eh. Every Saturday yon eh. Tapos yung Hills Big Blues seven, <laughs> I think on Wednesdays yung Hills Big Blues if I'm not mistaken. So nostalgia talaga. And and this one sabi nila din nag disband na. Um of course, uh Daft Punk. Yeah. So, this is a record ng one more time. And um Finally, uh, medyo cliche din siya, China crisis, wishful thinking. <laughs> Pero again, no, um, kung ano yung experience ko noon, uh, yun ang binabalik nito. 
Yeah, so it's about it. your taste <laughs> and it's about the great, you know, that's what I love about playing like the, you know, if you're in a nostalgia trip. Um, when I start, I grew up listening to Frank Sinatra, Bill Eckstein, Sarah Vaughan, because that's what my dad's music. And mm-hmm. now, you know, I never liked it. I was just tasked to, you know, play the music because he could not uh, deal with the technology. So, ako yung taga play niya, tapos taga flip, tapos taga play ulit. You know, and it's only now that I'm appreciating it because when I rediscovered my father's music, it brings me back to the time where I would be spending afternoons with my dad listening to a record. But as a, as a kid, like as a hyperactive 10-year-old kid, I didn't want to be there. I wanted to be somewhere else, you know, either bicycling or drawing or, you know, going outside and playing with my friends. But now I really appreciate it because it brings back great memories of times, you know, not only simpler times, but times with your loved ones that that I wish that I had paid more attention, you know what I mean, back in the day. But I'm just glad that it's uh, it's taking on now in terms of my father's music taste. So I'm I'm glad for that. Music is a is a great equalizer in that sense because it can bring you back in time. Rico, let's go to you. Ah, ako, ako. Oh, top ten, tayo, top ano ten. Mo, Siyempre, we're, we're giving we're giving Toti time because Toti has oh, two thousand titles, twenty thousand titles to think of. Eh. You know? 20,000 divided by 10,000. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, let me start off with, uh, I don't know. I just really like uh, British uh, New Wave bands. Uh, most probably of the, uh, the, the British accent. Uh, it, it, it's uh, such a beautiful way of speaking the English language. <laughs> so, uh, here's uh, one. Uh, it's called Lotus Eaters. Yes. <laughs> mm. Those sisters, uh, first picture of you. First one of my favorites. I love this. I love this group. And they also sang uh, German, German Girl. Girl. German, 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 <laughs> German Girl. Oh, yeah. So yeah. one of my um, one of my best uh, 12 inch uh, uh, records. And then Catch Me I'm Falling. Of <laughs> course. Yeah, no. <laughs> Talaga, if you look at it, no. It's between 1983 to 1987. All of these, uh, all of these artists. Very uh, specific, oh. Very specific. <laughs> uh, and then uh, this is one song that I really like from uh, the Human League, uh, Mirror Man. Yeah, mm. Here comes a mirror man. <laughs> On the so, comment, yung offshore, dapat pala ka required kantahin yung plaka sa top ten. <laughs> The Mirror Man. I mean, they have other songs like The Lebanon. What was another? Louise. Uh, Louise. Louise. Um, I have also those uh, 12 inch singles, but Mirror Man is uh, my favorite. Nice. nice. And then another uh, group is uh, Dexy's Midnight Runners. Yeah, Come, baby, on, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, I. You know, when I went to, to London about two years ago before I left uh, the BBC. I, I went, I thought that. Uh, Dexys Midnight Runners just had an album, but well, I found out that their hit song "Come On Eileen" had a uh, had a twelve inch uh, release. So I was lucky to get one of these a- in London. And of course, just like uh, Rufi there, Congressman Rufi, uh, uh, you have um, Modern English. Uh, my favorite is uh, "I Melt With You." Melt with I, you. Didn't, I bought this in 1983, 1984. <laughs> wow. You know? Uh, mm-hmm. For the uh, for the mobile group, so <laughs> it's still intact. I got it from where? Where did I get it? Tower Records. Yeah, Tower <laughs> Records. There you go. So I melt with you, uh, and then uh, of course one of uh, Rufy's uh, favorites as well, uh, the Smiths. The Smiths. Yeah. The Smiths, uh, I like this song. Uh, this, char- this char- charming, charming man. man. <laughs> of course, of course. I go to record bars now. I take a look at these singles, which I bought for maybe like uh, two to three pounds. They're now worth like 2,000 pesos. Wow. <laughs> They're so expensive. Even the, the pre-loved, even the yeah. pre-loved finals, Toti. Um, no, it's actually, that's, that's uh, cheap if it's 2,000. Back in 1980s, 1988, that was yeah. uh, $100. $100. Wow. $100 for the Oh wow! Yeah. Uh, but I don't know if there's a 
they've been reissued, obviously. So yes, that's they have why. been reissued. Uh, yes, I've seen the reissued. original twelve are are expensive, uh, very expensive. And then, of course, I have this uh, Japan press. I also go to uh, I also go to Tokyo and Osaka to for my vinyl shopping. So this is a Japan press of Aha and uh, the Sun Always Shines on TV. Take on me. So there are several mm-hmm. versions here of the Sun. Uh, the Sun Always Shines on TV. There you go. <laughs> uh, my my comment, Tayo, from uh, oh. Chito Miranda. Since it's on you, Rico, uh, he's actually talking to Ellie. So yung mga tawag namin sa mga inaarkila ng lights and sound system eh, rent tayo ng mobile, pare. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and that used to be the life of the party. You know, you if you have a if you have a good mobile, yes. you know, supplier with a good DJ, man, that that just made your party. Sikat That's ka. true. Uh, rain lights, right? Rain lights oh, and oh. lights. <laughs> 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 you know, one experience that we had at Corinthian Gardens, I think we were uh, in third year high school, no? I mean, wow, we set it up. It was an assumption party. And then sumabog yung rain lights namin, tsaka yung floodlights. Oh my God. <laughs> yun na yun. Tapos yung speakers yun namin, sumabog, nakakahiya. <laughs> Ayan, sabi ng offshore music, oh, ibalik na ang mobile. Ibalik <laughs> na. <laughs> o kailangan lahat tayo mag- magpabakuna oh, na, oh hindi ba? Para mag- yes, <laughs> yes. Once we get vaccinated and we're free of this pandemic, babalik yan. <laughs> babalik tayo. tayo any lahat, any, lahat, any lahat, excuse lahat. to throw a party where people can get together, have drinks, and dance, I'm there. Yes. And of <laughs> course, oy, as oy, sister, I'm not sure what number this is. I think this is number six. A hmm. swing out sister, of course, uh, break out. And I'm sure you watched their concert when they were here <laughs> way back in the 80s. They were supposed to be here last year. Actually. I already had the ticket. I already oh. had the ticket. Unfortunately, it was canceled. It was supposed to be April of last year. But I watched them. I remember at the, um, I'm not sure if that was um, at the Pasig or some Pasig Arena. Uh, there you go. Ang sabi, sabi daw ni Boy, season kung babalik daw yung mobile, balik na rin siya daw sa mobile disco with disco <laughs> stereo. <laughs> you know what? There's a lot of uh, top DJs right now performing on Facebook. I I, yeah. I get to watch them. Yeah, just Boya, Boya does a Boya set season. regularly. <laughs> yeah, Boya does a Boya. set regularly on FB and on Kumu as well. Mm-hmm. Ah, on Kumu, okay. Yeah. I'll uh, I'll sign up on Kumu, and then of course uh, Elvis Costello and the Attractions. Oh, nice one. Uh, my favorite song here is this, uh, is every time I write the book. It's not. Uh, it's not. Uh, it's not a 12-inch extended remix, but it has what makes it unique is that it has backing vocals from Aphrodisiac. There you go. Sorry. <laughs> stand out from the album uh, recording. Uh, si Ellie. Um, uh, to my last nag- two. Si, si, si Ellie, Ellie, si Ellie nag comment. Tangina, gusto kong, gustong, gusto kong pumunta sa Corinthians, pero I haven't got the stitch to wear. <laughs> <laughs> so required, required talaga yung kakantahin ko talaga, no? <laughs> okay, Rico. Let, okay. Uh, Sorry, so, let another one of my favorite bands, uh, Aztec Camera. <clears throat> yeah. First days, they sang Jump. Uh, and of course, uh, Oblivious. Yeah. But this one is uh, Deep, Wide, and Tall. And of course, the final one, tenderness. Oh, oh tenderness. <laughs> there you go. A general yeah. public. And of course, uh, another favorite, which is in, just in one 12 inch single, is Never You Done That. That's also mm-hmm. another uh, favorite of mine. So there you go. Um, can I go through my other 40? Okay. I don't know. Let's, 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 let's ask Toti if he's ready. Okay, Todd, Todd, uh, are you ready? ready? Calculating. Yeah. Top 10 okay, tayo. I just, I just want to say that this is not my top 10 because it's really, it's just really just difficult. That's why I had, I had that panic attack as Audrey would have told you. Because um, my records are, you know, my, my main forte is a lot of indie, post-punk, things like that. But I also have disco and... Um, Jazz and, and a lot of things. No, also eighties uh, boogie, R and B, uh, funk. So so it's just so so too much. So I don't even I haven't even touched on on techno and house, which I have a lot yeah. of because of my rave days. 
But um, so this is more of just bands, but bands or or even stuff that from, from the eighties, um, but not necessarily my top ten. It's really just stuff that I just pulled because uh, just be able to to do it. So um, this is uh, my bloody Valentine. Mm. It's the compilation of the mini LP that they had back then. Um, I don't know if you can see, but it's also signed. Wow. So, so that's mm. one. Uh, man, it's um, XTC's Skylarking, mm -hmm. but it's a different cover. It's the the cover that you don't really see at all. It's the one with the pubic hair, um, with the petals, as opposed to the blue one. Um, again, yeah. this is from yeah. XTC, which is yeah. my favorite band. And I'm sure some of the others might have might recognize the name XTC. Uh, this is uh, Paul Weller um, oh. from the Jam. Uh, yes. When he this was the first solo album um, after this band this banding style council and the Jam. Um, this was the, the best ever uh, solo from him, even though he has had so many after. Uh, let's yeah, it's fine. This is uh, the wedding present. Um, uh, it's an English band, it's 80s, but these are underground post punk bands. The small, the the, it, the real uh, originators of the indie indie sound. So, okay. um, so they are. This is one of my favorite bands as well, The Wedding Present, David Gedge. So, this is one of their famous albums, George Best, for the football player. I'm, I'm uh, just busy taking down all these names. <laughs> and it's a beautiful way to discover music, right? This is uh, David Sylvian, mm. who is the singer of Japan mm. from the 80s. Yes. Um, yes. But it's, uh, I don't know what this is really. It's, uh, I think it's a, it could be a bootleg or maybe an official, but it's uh, taken from a cassette. But anyway, wow. it's uh, sort of like an ambient um, exploration uh, thing for him. Um, this is Throbbing Gristle's 20 Jazz Funk Greats, and they're not jazz funk, as you know. Um, this is an original from back then, so this costs a lot. Uh, but it's been reissued lately, so you can you can buy the reissue. And it's obviously it was released also in different countries, but this. O nga, kulang nga yung top 10 kay, kay Toti eh. Hala, nag-free si Toti. This is the original UK. Ng... Yo, UK. There we go. This is, I don't know if you can see, but this is... Is it frozen? No, no, you're good, you're good. You're a little frozen lang. Okay. You, you, yeah, you, there, you're moving, you're you moving. You can't see, but this... Yeah. You can't can see it, but um, this is Fire in the Sky. This is the godlike genius of Scott Walker. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with Scott Walker, but he used to be a 60s uh, sort of an idol, but but then he became really um, very experimental, and his uh, in-between idol and experimental albums are highly sought after. Uh, and this was uh, a compilation made by Julian Cope of The Teardrop Explodes. Oh. So, um, yeah, this is one of my really favorite ones. Um, this is uh, Danger Came Smiling from Ludus, which is um, a post-punk post, -punk, uh, post -punk band from the... Maybe they came out 78 or something. And this is 
Morrissey's favorite band. So it's one of his inspirations, basically. Before Ludus? He, Sorry, the name, the, the name was Ludus? Yes, Lu Ludus. L-U-D-U-S. -L okay, got it. Yes. This is um, Mark Hollis's uh, solo album from when when he wasn't dead yet. Uh, came out <laughs> 1998. Um, Mark Hollis is the lead singer of Talk Talk. But oh, yes. I don't know if you're familiar with Talk Talk, right? It's, it's my, my life, life. but yeah. the it's last, my life. Yeah, but the, that's what pe most people here know. But the last two, three albums of Talk Talk were commercial suicides. They were very experimental. Mm -hmm. And this uh, is the continuation of it. Nice. So this is nine. This is uh, Tracy Thorne. Oh, Tracy Sorry, Thorne of, uh, is Everything But The Girl. Of yeah. uh, Everything But The Girl. Hmm. Uh, yes. Tracy Thorne, yeah. Wow. That's yeah, gorgeous. So, uh, so. Um, also signed. And last is the original canister release of Public Image Limited, which is uh, Johnny Rotten's yeah. post Sex Pistols band. Um, oh, this <laughs> came out. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. Oh. Si yeah, yeah. As you can see, originally, <laughs> 19, 1979, Oh, there you go. I used to slam. I used to slam dance to PIL, you know, back in the day, and that's that's a fantastic collector's um, <clears throat> item. So, guys, thank you so much for sharing your top ten. Right now, we've got a few questions from uh, from our viewers. No, um, I'd like to call out uh, the question from Joseph Matthew um, about picture discs. This is a bit technical, na, diba? Um, about picture discs, does it really sound less? Uh, does it sound um, less better? Then regular black vinyls. Um, Toti, uh, maybe you'd want to take that? If it's a picture disc, does it, is it a major difference in sound? Okay. Um, no, initially, initially back in the 80s, when they were first sort of popularized, or at least a lot of them came out, um, they didn't sound that good. Okay, so they were basically, you know, more promotional than than anything but um that has changed uh because nowadays picture discs sound really good as well uh just like the colored vinyl that's uh quite very popular right now with a lot of artists um uh yeah it it has vastly improved so yeah that was a long a long time ago when it, it used to sound crap so now, now the technology has caught up that uh, the picture discs sound just as good in terms of sound quality. Yes. Great. Uh, yeah. Okay, I have another question here from... Wait, let me look for that. There, Benj or Sino. Um, do you have in your collection yung alam yung hindi mahanap basta-basta kung saan? Kung tanongin natin si, to, si, si Toti niyan, ngumbukas tayo dito kasi 20,000 records yan, right? <laughs> but okay, so so basically, your your most valuable, your most valuable vinyl. Um, I think Rico, your vinyl is, is very specific in terms of year, mm. in terms of uh, artist, and of course, in terms of version. So, do you have a hard time finding that? Um, you know, because it has to suit very specific um, standards to your taste. Uh Whenever I travel, I, I just mm -hmm. discover. I don't research. So let's mm -hmm. say, for example, China Crisis and Black Man Ray or uh, let's say, for example, um, like Strawberry Switchblade. Uh, they have, whenever, wherever I go, whether it be Japan or Hong Kong or, or the UK or in the US, I don't do research. If I find it, then I just buy it. 
But if you're just talking about maybe the most valuable uh, uh, record that I have, well, I'm still looking for that Shauna dancing 12 inch, but I have the um, seven inch of uh, More to Lose and the ah. uh, CD, which I would say is the I'm most valuable at the moment for me. I, yes, Tati, you were saying? I will check for you if... No, I will check for Rico if uh, I, my third copy can be sold. For Ayun. sale. Ayun na. <laughs> Ayun na. That's why when I was asking Rico, so do you have a hard time dancing? Then I realized mentally, I, I thought in my head, na well, but he hasn't been to Totti's store yet. So Not yet. <laughs> that's going to happen tomorrow. <laughs> that's why. <laughs> I have to get okay. dressed. <laughs> oh, ito naman, yes, um, from yes, Kelvin. Kelvin Mila Milabo. Does it matter to you guys kung remaster siya or original press yung plaka? That's another thing that uh, I admit I don't really look at when I shop for vinyls. I don't look at the grams. I don't look at the, you know, if this is the original press, uh, the remaster, and all that. Um, if I like the band and it just jumps out at me, that's what I buy. But um, I guess... For you guys who have you know major collections than me, Toti, yeah, you're raising your hand. Go for it. Uh, for me, originally, I really don't like um, I don't I don't like reissues. Um, I'm not. I don't care if it's 180 gram, 140 gram, whatever. Um, I'm not an audiophile. I'm not into the sound system. Mm -hmm. I'm more into mm -hmm. the, you know. The titles, the the records themselves. Yeah. So as much as possible, I try to get the original pressings. Now, um, having said that, there are remasters of certain titles or particular titles that you might want to get because they will probably sound better now than the original. So if if uh, audio, you know, sonic is is a thing for you, that's when you might want to get it. Or if you're a completist, as well. So even if you have this particular album, but you just want to hear the newly remastered version of it, then you buy it. But for me, as long as I have the original, and it's better that I have the original because that has more value. Uh, uh, um, I go with with the original pressings. So you have to do. You still have to do your research in terms of uh, what would sound better now. Um, of course, it all goes also into your preference. In that sense, um, like you would prefer the original pressings, but mm -hmm. on the modern hi-fi now, it really depends. Also, that's another topic that we can we can you know um, talk about for days. It depends on your home setup. Um, what you listen to it on. There's another question here for Gold. Um, what what preferred mode of listening do you uh, use? Do you listen to it on headphones? Do you leave it on your stereo? And if so, what is your stereo at home? What do you listen to uh, your records on at home? Um, Rico, let's go to you. Uh, you know what? I'm just like uh, Toti. Um, the sound doesn't really matter. I'm not an audiophile. Okay. So it could just be any any kind of system. Uh, having moved back just uh, having moved back to Manila just last year, and having moved now to um, to to a new home, we're just basically unpacking um, <laughs> my wife's speakers. My wife is an audiophile, by the way. Ah, I'm her perfect. total option. I can just use an ordinary sound system like a portable uh, turntable to listen to my music, but yeah. she. She needs speakers. Uh, she has sp Spendor speakers. She has her own turntable. She just really loves the sound, and my son too. They, it's so important to them that you know the balance of the treble and the bass. Me, it doesn't it doesn't really matter. So I have only uh, because we haven't really unpacked our whole sound system. I'm just using right now a portable um, a portable turntable. And for me, I'm I'm just really so happy just listening to my records on that portable um, uh, turntable. And the mga you mga briefcase, you mga satch me the briefcase. Correct. Na, yeah, that's what I use also. Exactly, that's home. what I have right now. A satch me. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm looking. I'm looking to upgrade, but then you know what? I'm I'm also very happy with just the small like suitcase yeah. type. You know, happy na ako don. Ikaw, mm. ikaw congressman. Ano yung ano yung uh, 
preference mo. Nag-headphones ka ba? Uh, you have a mix. You have two turntables. You, you yeah. have a mixing setup, no? Yes, uh, I li- I listen. Um, I don't use the headphones to listen to the music, uh, mm-hmm. but I use it, of course, when I do mixing. So my setup here is I, I have a mixer, um, two SL twelve hundreds, and just a studio speaker. Uh, that's what I use. Um, I'm I'm also not much into the technical aspect of of of, of sound. Um, uh, although I'm a DJ, but uh, I just play the music, and uh, as long as it it sounds good to my ears, I'm fine with it. So it's just a simple setup of uh, studio monitor speakers. Fantastic, mm-hmm. Diego, ka o ano setup mo sa bahay? Uh, my speakers ako dito, Lasis uh, monitor ones. Actually, it's for making tracks. Actually, it's a reference speakers for making tracks, pero busted na yung Twitter na yun sa kaya ako ginawa ng pang, pang sounds, no? Pero, uh, syempre, best with speakers on for me. Um, I only use the headphones if I want to yeah mix or it's too late to blast the sounds or mm. gonna, uh, or if you're dissecting something, some part, I guess the headphones are on. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. All right, uh, we have another question here from Jason Horka. Do you ever buy an extra copy of the album or of your record and never open it and keep it as just a part of your collection? Because there are those, right? The ones who collect toys, the never remove from box. Yes. May ganun ba kayo? <laughs> do you guys do that? Um, me now, because <laughs> because. Because I sell online now, hmm. uh, I keep I, I I try when I invest on something I keep one for myself because favorite ko siya and the other one is for trying to sell parang ganon yeah pero I don't keep it like when yare may sa akin sealed may sa akin pangharabas parang hindi ganon yung ano parang the other Uh-oh. ones to let go parang ganon mm. but not all, all the time. Not all the time. Not, not with each album that you have. <laughs> Hindi ka naman completest na ganun na kailangan ko yung isang like, you know, I know a lot of collectors who will play one and just never open the other one just because he wants to keep a pristine copy of it. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sure thought I'm sure thought you do that too, right? In 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 that sense or do you open yeah. all your all, do you open all your stuff? Uh no, the ones that I don't open is if you know, if it's if it's an album that that either I have uh, oh, the completely overused, the yeah. then I have an extra one or two or three mm. copies, then just for backup or to sell. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. We can hear you. So, so basically, your your you know what okay. what, so, yeah. what the um, albums yeah, that you I, I open do that. up. Yes. Fantastic. What do you what about you, Congressman? Do you do that? May mga extra copies ka pa yan? Wala. Um, everything I buy, I I open and I use it. Olari na kunti na na extra copy. Parang siguro bulari na makasis sa isip ko yung reselling it or uh, sell. So I just buy for keeps. Yun sa akin na. So I don't have extra copies. And you, Rico? Yeah, same, same like uh, uh, Congressman and Totti. I open, I open all my uh, albums. I open up all my vinyls. I don't buy an extra copy and just keep it sealed. But uh, because I'm also a toy collector, uh, all my toys are all in their in their original packaging. I never take them out of the box. That's what you call N O O B. Not out of the box. <laughs> but then, you know, if we all watch Toy Story, you're actually denying them the pleasure of being played with. That's true. I feel I have a lot of friends who are toy collectors. Na parang, guys, you have to release the toys because they should be played with. <laughs> I know. I know. That's, Just like, that's, like McFarlane toys or, yeah. or Funko Pops. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's, that's, we just keep them in the box. <laughs> that's the joy of it. All right, so we're going to go into the rundown now. Where I'm going to ask you like uh, three uh, very simple questions off the top of your head. 
what uh, what uh, answer would you give? With the first one, bawal yung sagot na show na dancing. Ah. Kasi, <laughs> y- yun yung nasabi na natin yan eh. Pero, um, basically, the question is, what is your holy grail na record? Wow. What is the one record that you've been wanting to get your hands on as part of your collection? Diego, let's start with you. Isa lang, ha? Isa lang. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, nags- nagsimula ako mag-dig and all my friends are... My, I have friends also who, who nabubuhay lang sa ukay nga mag, mag-dig ng records. Parang yung sought after na kumahanap mo ay yung buong penera nga na, ano, na batokari sa kalesa. Well, actually, Batukada. favorite ko yung kanta na yun. At uh, alam ko sobrang mahal ng record na yun. And any buong penera uh, original... Uh, albums. Um, pero hindi na ako nag-aspire na makakuha ko yun. <laughs> Unless na meron na, no. May, may... So actually, kumuha ako ng reissue. Kasi lalabas siya sa Vicor. Eh. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, oh, actually. But uh, I cannot spend 40,000 for a record. So, if I had 40,000 or 50, I would buy it na lang for like more records na lang, diba? Or whatever. Lahat lang gusto ko, siguro. No, but okay. So, in, in this in this, in this this questioning, money is no object, pare. Ah, ganun ba? You have the money to spend. Yeah, holy grail. Kung, pero, kailangan mo hanapin, tapos ano yung isang record na kailangan na sa collection mo? And that's that's Bong Panera's record. Oh, uh, siguro. Yun, yeah, yun. Yun, siguro. Yeah, happy yun, ako. Yun. Mm, yeah. Ikaw, Congressman Rufi. <laughs> ano yung Medyo holy chi- grail record? Medyo cheesy yung akin, ha? Oh. <laughs> ano, The Promise by uh, When in Rome. Oh. Uh, I have that. Ang, ang, I have that. <laughs> <laughs> Pero ang, ang ay nahanap ko, yung original issue ng 1987. Yes. Na, na 12-inch remix. Ipapayarap uh, yun. <laughs> why? Yeah, why? Because it was the first record that my wife bought me. Hindi pa kami married nun. She bought oh. it in the U.S., and I was so proud to show my friends that we already have this record. <laughs> it was my, my then girlfriend, now wife, who bought it for me. So, now yung original ko na yun, na kasama do sa nasira uh, sa during, during that typhoon and we throw it away. So, wala ako, ma- wala, up to now, wala ako nakikita ganun. And if I see one, I would definitely get it. <laughs> Ayan, mag negotiate na kayo ni Rico. <laughs> oh, and thought you also will check now. Oh, yon. <laughs> what about you, Rico? Rico, what's your holy grail? No, record? No, I, have, record? I have copies lying down. Oh, yon. Oh, my copy now. Yeah, mag yeah. Tayo offline. offline. I think in that in that period of 1983 uh, to 1988, 89, I think I have almost all the records that I want. All these very important records of that uh, of that period from lotus eaters to general public to uh, aztec camera i'm sorry i'm sounding like a broken record uh, jamie <laughs> <laughs> it's your <Yona> dancing yun talaga kinahanap ko oh yeah okay uh, so bubulik tayo sa show na dancing toti <laughs> <laughs> I think Toti can help you guys out with all your hopes and dreams for the Holy Grail yes. record. But, okay, so, but, but Toti, what is yours? Actually, actually I can. Ah, I yun. don't have there a you know, Holy Grail, really. Because it's an ongoing thing for me. I mean, eh, eh. Oh, nag freeze. Nag freeze. But you guys heard that. Huh? He can help you out. Huh? Every, yes, yes. Every you all week, heard that. Every uh-huh. one. Every week, every week you get a new batch of albums? Is that what you're saying? So, ayun, nagahangka, Toti. Yon, okay. So, babalik. Okay. So, Toti doesn't have a holy grail because this is an ongoing process. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. you know, imagine, imagine, um, Toti, he couldn't even, he couldn't even pick top 10. He just had to do this because he wanted to play the game. Um, but he can actually help you guys out with all your holy grail. So that's <laughs> that's fantastic. I, I just I just asked for one thing. When you guys go to the shop, can you just message the thread so I can just be there and drool, you know? <laughs> okay. So next next question. Next question. Um, what is the most valuable 
record in your collection right now. Mm. Yan yung record na sentimental, uh, meaning the record that you would never part with, mm. the record that they'll have to pry out of your cold dead hands. And you only have to choose one. Diego, let's start with you. Yeah. Um, okay. Yung hindi mo papahiramin sa ibang DJ, hindi mo man lang ilalabas sa bahay. Well, ito, um, Afro, Afro Tempo sa Boomer Clemens. Mm. But uh, actually, when I, when I dug this, I didn't know that it had value until I researched it. Uh, I don't have that much expensive records. So, but this this one is um, uh, for keeps. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not a, talking about. Uh, I'm not talking about monetary value. Ah. Yung talagang pinaka valuable to you. Kasi mahal na mahal na mahal na mahal ni mo yung record. Hindi pero mahal 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 ko to. Mahal ko to. Oh, yun 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 <laughs> so, yun yun. Parang yun. ako mahal. Eh. So I mean, <laughs> I mean from the heart. Ah. I mean ganon. Pero ito yung because you told me to choose one, so this this one, yeah. Again, to Afro Temple Sabu Martinez. Yeah. Uh, Toti, let's go to you. Ano yung ano, What's the one album that that you will never part with? That they will have to pry out of your cold dead hands. Uh, <clears throat> that, that's uh, I cannot answer that question <laughs> at all because to me, I can never part with my collection. Period. So, and I rarely, I rarely lend lend records as well. Mm-hmm. So, no. <laughs> No, no, zero. So that's that's his entire collection, yeah, guys. Zero. zero. No, sorry, not parting with it. Yeah. Uh, galeng. No, I mean, uh, I mean, I can part. Oh. I can, I can lend a few, but but as a whole, maybe not really. <laughs> Spoken like a true collector. Yeah, it's hard to choose just one, man. Mm. But okay, uh, Rico, let's let's go to you. What's what's well, your I'm, one album? Uh like like uh like Toti, I'm very, 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 very selfish. <laughs> <laughs> I also do not lend my records to anybody. That's why I don't even tell anybody I have a vinyl collection. That's correct. So this, this this interview has exposed me. <laughs> <laughs> and it will be your fault, Jamie, if I get a lot of calls <laughs> on if people want to borrow my uh, new wave collection. <laughs> If there's one record that I will not want to part with, uh, which I love really very dearly, uh, that would be Lotus Eaters, uh, first picture of you. Nice. I really treasure uh, uh, this uh, piece of uh, record. Fantastic. But of course, once we have Shiona dancing 12 inch, that will be part, that will be the top, and then Lotus <laughs> Eaters will be the second. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, Do you have other 12-inch uh, Lotus Eaters? I Ayan. have German Girl. German Girl. And it hurts. <laughs> and it hurts. You, and you don't yeah, need those, someone new? Uh, no, I don't uh, I don't have that. Yeah, but do you want it now? That's the uh, question. So, yeah. I will listen to it because because I only buy the singles. So I just listened mm. to these three songs mm. because I know that well, it is a single in an uh, album. There's... It's a sin, no? It's a sin. It's in that mm. album. It's a sin. Yes. All the yeah. top songs. Yeah. <laughs> so now be yeah. careful what you be careful what you wish for because Totti is going to pull it out. Yeah. Say, oh, <laughs> I will visit Totti when I mean? he is available. When he yeah. is available. There you go. <laughs> What about you, Congressman? What's your well, one? I'm available. One album. Oh yeah, Totti's Totti's available. There you go. He's giving you he's giving you uh, permission. Ikaw, Congressman. Ano yung, uh, one, uh, album? one album in the in this collection, uh, pinaka valuable. I, w- I would say the Ray Conniff uh, Christmas album. Oh. Because hand me down sa akin yun eh, ng, uh, parents ko and uh, again, masyado akong nostalgic eh, no? uh, yun yung pine-play nila during Christmas when I was a kid. So opening gifts and ano, 
uh, yun yung naririnig ko. So, and it's with me uh, now, binigay nila. So, and that, I would say that would be the most valuable there. Yung nice. iba, mayroon na ako mga ibang pinamigay na na records eh. Pero yung, yun, definitely not. Not even throw it away kahit kung gas-gas na siya. Oh, that's true. That's true. Because it, it's handed down. It's an heirloom. Yeah. Yes, diba? yes. Galeng. All right, let's go one for the road. One last question for you guys before uh, we're hitting the two-hour mark already. Wow. Um, what Para advice? 30 minutes what? lang ang pag-usap. Ang pag-usap. <laughs> oh, di ba? Kasi we're talking about things we love and we're listening to <laughs> the same passions eh. Um, okay, so one for the road. What advice would you give to anybody who's just started collecting vinyl today? Uh, Rico, let's go with you. Uh, I would say uh, start off with uh, pre-loved albums. Start off with pre-loved albums. Uh, uh, they're more reasonably priced. And uh, if you buy the remastered or the reissued sealed ones, they're just too expensive, especially if you're uh, on a budget. Yeah. And I'm sure you'll be able to find these pre-loved records in, um, in a lot of these uh, record stores. And just like the other collectors, for me, it's, it's, if, you're, if you're starting out, it would also be nice to buy the, the best of. The best of, let's say, Tears for Fears. Hmm. Um, the best of the Smiths, you know, I mean, pre-loved, start off with that. Don't uh, start off um, uh, buying these expensive records that, you know, you might regret that, you know, you're spending too much because these pre-loved could cost you about maybe 500, 600, maybe up to a thousand pesos. And that's a good way to start out um, in terms of building your collection. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Okay. Jago, let's go to you. Ano yung advice mo for collectors now? Uh, maganda nga mag-start sa pre-love kasi that's how I started. Um, uh, if you have money once in a while, and the, um, of course, let's say that you have already a player, no? So, dapat may player ka rin para may enjoy mm. record mo. Kasi kung, may, kung bili ka na na bili, um, Naka-display lang yan, di ba? So, so right. sa, sana maka-acquire ka. Hand-me-down, try mo, or, you don't, or yung nga, portable, um, used, go for used uh, players. And then, um, when you're into your collection na, and you've earned some money, you can um, upgrade to speakers and uh, better turntable, like that. Um and then about buying records, syempre, um, before parang I would just buy to have volume, alam mo quantity. Uh, mm. Pero, um, but uh, mas okay din yung quality. Yeah, go, go for quality. Um, so, um, buy the records that you really love, parang ganun. But also, um, have a ear to, to explore because that's the best thing about um, records is uh, to explore. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Jago. Congressman, let's go with you. Yeah. Um, siguro to somebody starting a collection. Um, ako siguro ang magiging advice ko, don't go, don't get caught up too much with the technical, the technical aspect. Yun nga, yung number of grams or whatever, no? Unless talagang alam na alam mo yun. But, First, go for what what um, attracts your heart. No, dun sa music, because um, it's really the it's all really all about the music. Yeah. Um, th that's what moves you. And then later on, siguro pag nagdevelop ka na nung, nung uh, 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 taste for the technical aspect, that's the time that you go into it. Kasi baka pagpasok mo pa lang dun sa vinyl collection, tapos caught up ka na masyado dun sa sa technicals. Parang, you know, you, you, got, you started your collection um, not because of the music, but because of the technicals. I don't know how, kung tama ba yung masasabi ko, but mm -hmm. sa akin kasi, I'm, I'm not much into the technicals. I'm really into the, to the music, what's in it. Uh, yun, yun, ang, yun ang sumasabit sa, yun ang, yun ang nag, uh, kumukuha ng puso ko dun sa, sa record. Yes. All right. Thank you, Congressman Rufi. And Toti? If you have any advice for people who are starting just to collect vinyl now, what would you say to them? 
Um, okay. Um, well, first, go with what what you like because uh, obviously you already have your your set of preferences. Um, maybe what you discovered through your your parents or your brother or sister. Um, so yun muna. But but um, have the open mind to explore and to listen to other others other things and new stuff other than what you're used to. Uh, tama is na bini Diego na oh, obviously you have to buy a turntable. And for starters, you're okay with with the the portables. But I have to remind you that um, if you really want your collection to last, you should upgrade to a little slightly you know uh, better equipment. Not that's not audiophile levels, but you know mm. there, there's many um, entry level, but not the portable ones because you will damage your records that way because they're not the tone arm isn't really that well balanced so it might not even have a balance at all uh, and it's like you know sticking down hard on your on your records so that's one and then um, yeah you just start off slowly it's, it's not it's not about uh, paramihan uh, mm -hmm. I, I know I've always been asked, like, uh, yeah, how many records do you have? And then obviously I answer with what I answer, but it's not how, how, ma how many you have. It's yeah. the what you have inside. It's, it's a, what the titles are. Because it yeah. doesn't matter if you have 20,000, but I could go to Evangelista and buy 20,000 Julio Iglesias that, you know, records there and just put it on the wall and it's 20,000. <laughs> so, um, yes, so there, but... Slow. But uh, yeah, so it's the quality and what the titles are. That's what makes the collection. Um, and so you slowly build on that. And you do that by, by knowing what to buy, what's starting off. Yeah, it's good that you start off maybe with pre-loved, um, know where you can buy them, reasonable. And then I just have to say that it also depends on the quality, uh, because sometimes you, you just think that, okay, I'm, I'm buying P-Love because it's cheaper, which is fine if you don't have a budget, but the reason why some records are more expensive than the others, even if they're used, is because of the quality. So the condition of the, of the record. And that's what you're also paying for. Um, but you know, if, it, if it's a, a bit scratch and it's more than just hairline, then obviously it's being sold for cheap. So, yeah. but that's a good way to start. Um, and then once you have the budget, then you slowly move up. And um, you have to remember, it hasn't stopped ever. So it's just like when, when during the, the rave, 90s rave days, people assumed that um, we used CDs. I never used CDs. It was all that's records. True. It was all underground. It was all house records. So um, my point to that is uh, there are... There are thousands of new records, new artists that are putting out records every day. So you can imagine that much music out there. And it's not, it's not something that you, you might think, oh, well, I'm 50. I might not be into that anymore. I might not get into it. You'd be surprised because like for people who are into say new wave, like uh, Rico and Congress, um, there are bands that are sort of the continuation of, of mm -hmm. what they sort of left off. It, you know, there it's not new wave, but it's sort of similar. Um, it's a it's a progression of it. Mm -hmm. So it's like it's like their children. You know, you'd, you'd be surprised that you, you there's so much out there that you that's mm -hmm. really really good to to have as well. Um, I mean, not just to listen, but to have it in your collection. All right. That's fantastic. Like, you know, guys, thank you. Thank you so much for making the time to join us tonight. Um, Toti, Diego, Congressman sorry, Rufi, if, thank you so much, Rico. Um, thank you. Thank, thank you so much for joining us tonight and sharing your passion and sharing your collection. And I'm so glad that at least in some small way, um, mm. you guys are going to get together 
and yes. discuss uh, albums <laughs> after this. You know, and you know, Jamie, Jamie, yeah. I'm a frustrated spinner DJ, right? Now I have three who can teach me, who can be my mentor. There you go. I'm finally a DJ and a spinner. <laughs> there you go. And I think it's all part and parcel of like, um, I think not only for our passion for music, but also our passion for sharing music. That's important. And that I think that's what makes a community happen because it's a never ending cycle of, you know, sharing music, sharing what you're passionate about, sharing what you love. And, you know, it, it comes from the root of, you know, just enjoying it. So I'd like to thank you so much for coming on to On The Rocks tonight. Thank you, Rico. Thank you, Congressman Rufi. Thank you, thank you Jager. Thank you, thank you Totti. Thank you, thank guys, you. please stay safe. Thank you. And thank um, you. when you guys go to Totti's uh, store, can you please, like, message me? I just want to, like, hang out. <laughs> <laughs> this weekend. I will visit you, Totti. Game. Just tell me when. Game. Yes. Game. Yes. All right. All right. Sure, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much for taking the time, Thank ladies you. and gentlemen, for our first I vinyl give night. My address, uh, our wonderful guest. There you go. Perfect. Thank you, guys, and good night. Thank good you. Night. Woo. night. Man, that was fantastic. Um, just you know, it's 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 amazing how a lot of people are very passionate about you know what they're collecting. But I think I'd like to touch on to what you know Diego and Totti specifically said that you know your musical tastes define who you are. We are defined by what we love. Who we love, yes, but also in terms of music, music is such a deeply personal thing um, that runs into your emotions, whether it be nostalgia, whether it be love or or uh, release or or whatever purpose you may have or, or reason you may have for enjoying music. The beauty about it is that music is meant to be shared, and that's why um, I think uh, in terms of a community. Uh, music is so vibrant and ever-changing and ever-growing and so alive because we all love listening to music. And that's what Vinyl Night is all about. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for tuning in to our first Vinyl Night because we're going to be we're gonna keep on doing this. And if you'd like to contribute or maybe even be on the show to talk about your vinyl collection and discuss your love for vinyl, drop us a line, send us a message. We'd love to hear from you. And, of course, right now we'd love to hear from our sponsors. Um, just a quick shout out from Offshore Music. Uh, speaking of vinyl, the Abbey Road Mastered Full Flood 2 LP is still available in some record stores posted on our page. And of course, Suspiria Pink's new single, Everything, Everything, is available for streaming. And uh, also, uh, Sulos' uh, new single, Pugad Lawin, is also out and streaming right now. So check out this new music from these new groups. They're fantastic. And uh, man, I can't wait. I can't wait to get more music from them because they're currently recording um, new albums. And of course, um, a special announcement coming out tonight. Uh, our, uh, our friend from Pinkman, si Jiro Alva, is releasing his first solo album called Mula Sa Inyo. He dives into classical territory and displays his virtuosity with the guitar in this all-instrumental album which ranges from Beautiful Condiman to Six String Experimental Spare. So the Mulasayo album drops this Friday on April 23 on all streaming platforms only from offshore music. We'd also like to thank the Misty Mountain Cafe and Buenos Dias Panaderia. Perfect combination. Premium blend coffee and Milo buns and other baked goods. It's the most amazing experience in your mouth, guys. So please support these guys. Follow their Instagram pages. Follow their Facebook pages. And, you know, if you can't order from them because believe me you will not regret it and from our friends from liquor.ph hey this summer liquor.ph is the spot for all things rum it's summer baby so it's rum they're giving you up to 50 percent off for rums from all around the world before you have to ask hey, why is all the rum gone make sure you get yourself a single bottle or bundle of rum from liquor.ph this great deal is only good until the end of april so get yours now so, thank you for tuning in to On The Rocks. Ladies and gentlemen, that was our first vinyl night. We're going to be doing this once a month. So, um, we'd love to hear from you. And uh, hopefully, you get to uh, ask you about your passion for vinyl, for records, for music. Now, this is Jamie Wilson reminding you to please keep on rocking, keep on rolling. And if all else fails, let the music keep you going. And if you find that your life is a little shaken or stirred, a little mixed up, or on the rocks, 
What matters most is that you take your shot. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Cheers and good night. On the Rocks with Jamie Wilson is brought to you by Offshore Music. Go where the sound takes you.